Here we go at the lovely studios of WSAN Radio, located at 502 Montana on the corner of Hackberry. We are in this black museum here. It's called the William Historical National Museum. We do a lot of our interviews and guest appearance right here in this spot where I'm sitting at. If you want to see more of our guests and see our past um, interviews, Go to our YouTube channel, that's WSAN Radio SA, and once you go to that channel, you be going down rabbit holes. You want to see what do you see here, what happened here, what happened there. So we're here for you. This is your platform, San Antonio. So come on board, come on down, and join the train ride, and come listen to WSAN Radio, San Antonio, Texas, downtown east. Up, but I'm pretty sure it's smoking. Because uh, I remember last time we talked, we were talking about the baby boomers and Generation X, G Gen X, whatever you call them. <laughs> Good morning, young lady. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fine. I like the window behind you. You got any birds back there chirping? No, you know, that's the little background I chose okay. for today. Just All for right. you. Just oh. for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the last time we talked, we were talking about was it too late for the baby boomers to do anything? And um, what was it we could do with Generation X besides X them out? We don't want to do that, but no, we uh, need we need our Generation X. That's our future, right? We yeah, can't X them out. Yeah, yeah. They 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 um, I would say between the the two groups, Gen Gen X don't get mad at me, but y'all are a lot more entitled than the um. <laughs> Than the um, what you call the baby boomers? <laughs> I'm just saying. So wait, let's let me get this right because I think I will be considered Generation X. Actually, no, I think so. What's the age? Zero zero months to um ten years. I'm just kidding. I don't know the age. So I, yeah, I, so I'm looking at my chart here, right? Of okay, the generations. Well, all right, what is it? Generation X is. Born 1965 through 1980. The millennials is maybe who you're thinking of. That's born 1981 to 1996. And what is X? And then next is, so X is 96 through 1980. So the oldest generation X would be about 46. Okay. That wouldn't right. include you. You don't look like you're over thirty-two. No, I'm in the I'm in the Generation X category. Well, I'm gonna talk bad about y'all. Not really, but it's it's some of y'all, not all y'all. So, so y'all are our parents, though. Let's keep that. Let's keep that. You know. Yeah. So whatever we learned, we learned that from y'all, the baby boomers. Uh, I'm a. I'm a. Did take, I get you there? Take my foot <laughs> out my mouth. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, you got me there, but um, so, the, so the generation X was is is the latchkey kids, uh, right? Our parents just, you know, they they went to work, we came home, nobody was home, we was letting ourselves in, or we was at latchkey until our parents got off work. That's true too. Grandparents true. picked us up, right? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Girl, you're not supposed to be ganging up on me by yourself. You got to have Martha and everybody else. Well, me and, me and Martha get you next week. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that was such a, a broad rush I did for Generation X. But uh, but you're right. Some are and some not. Yeah. But, um, it, it's, it's, it's amazing since you brought it up. We are the baby boomers. Those are our kids. So mm -hmm. who's at fault? That's a bread big spectrum of who's at fault because so much influence y'all because you can yeah. right on the edge of the internet. Uh, yes. Uh, Facebook, uh, not Facebook. What was the other one out there besides, besides Facebook? Something else. That was called uh, MySpace. Hey, something. MySpace. MySpace, yeah. yep. Yeah, and so y'all came out in that era where y'all were growing to what was going on, the new wave in the United States, how yeah. we're going. And so it's pretty much, the, uh, we could blame the parents for some of it because we lost our guidance when, um, what's that guy that came out? Dr. Spock 
came out with a book on how to raise your kids and that screwed up the whole generation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I read, heard about that. <laughs> yeah, everybody read that book and started doing the kids like that. They didn't know they was torturing the parents. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, all right. We, we'll leave that alone. So, Oh, my goodness. Let's talk about the finance part of it. Okay. Since, since it was the baby boomers, and, and like me, I, I was blessed to um, know how to use my hands and work on things and been in my mm -hmm. own business. And at that time, it didn't occur to me to start saving things for retirement because when you have your own business, that's the last thing you worried about is yeah. that right there. So that's one side right there. The other side is the baby boomers who are working who did not take advantage. And I hate to say it because I know this is a bad word, 401k for retirement when they should have did something else. See, I, I somebody, yeah, somebody so back, if, if I say that, that will get up on your skin. You already know how I feel about the 401k. Yeah. But you know, I would say, I would say the baby boomers in that era, that's they still had pensions in around that time, right? Yes. The 401k replaced the pensions around what 1974 ish, somewhere around that. Yeah. Yeah, because the pensions got too expensive for the companies and you know, they decided to put now put more onus on the actual employee, you know, as to how they save. Um so they use the 401k. Um but I would say as far as is it is it too late for baby boomers? Um yes and no, right? Um you do now still as you're retiring now cuz baby boomers are retiring now, right? They do have access to social security. Right. Yeah. Um, the, the generation that is in trouble would be my generation, Generation X and younger. Right. Yeah. Because the baby boomers, you, you guys were a huge. You were a lot of people. Right. So that Social Security is going to run out after you guys pretty much eat that up. Right. Well, so um, not that it's too late for for baby boomers. I mean, as far as having time to you know, invest and grow their money. Yeah. Time is not, is no longer on their side. Okay. Right. Which is why you see a lot of, you know, elderly going back to work after they've retired because, you know, they ran, they outlived their money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's hard. Outlive your money, boy. Well, yeah. inflation, everything else got to do with it. Then yes, when people were involved in that uh, 401k, when that big company in Houston just screwed everybody over, a lot of people lost everything. Yeah. They had everything in one basket. And uh, that's the problem. Yeah. And yeah, that was a big problem. We we couldn't say what we want to use it for. We trusted that whoever was doing the 401k, we trust them to put it in the right stock and all that. Right. And and right. and they point blank, they got greedy. Yep. And, and I, I tell you what, when that when that um, company fell, uh, there were people out actually committing suicide and everything. I couldn't believe it was oh that God. devastating. I mean, when you think about it, your your whole life savings just gone in an instant. Yeah, it's, that's hard. That's a hard pill to swallow. You know what? You know, I my heart goes out to those that you know took it to that point. Right? That's that's definitely yeah. unfortunate, but that could take a huge mental toll. See, this, this, this is what I don't get. I hope mm -hmm. everybody listening going to hear what I'm getting ready to say. Why is it we could bail out the auto automakers, well, and then the banks when they do that, but the then airlines. The, the airlines, mm -hmm. but then when it hits the everyday people who lost everything, we can't bail them out. Very good point. That is the system of our government. Yeah. Right? But, which is yeah. which is why we we as individuals need to not try our best to not depend on, <laughs> yeah, you know, the government to, you know, be sure that we can retire. Right. Uh, so, yeah. Well, when I, reti when I retire, uh, you know, I went straight to the radio station, Yeah, and, um, but I got something coming in that's going, I don't even see it. I really don't see it. It just goes in the account. And my wife take care of everything, and um, uh, and, and I, I'm gonna say that I'm not a millionaire, but I'm comfortable. Right, which is I, good. I'm, I'm comfortable. Absolutely, I, I can do. We go on trips and and do what we need to do. That we're good because on her side, 
she had all that, the pension and everything. And um, and so that that was good over there. But for the generation, your generation, what they should be doing now and what they should have done before now to make sure they'll be okay when the age of 65 come around. So I'd say for Generation X, especially if you're the older, the, the I guess the latter part of Generation X, which is like I said, 44, 45 age range, you know, we still have 20 years. 20 years is a good span of time, right, to to save and stack and grow your money, right? Um, I'd say sitting down with a financial professional to review where, what you're currently doing now is the number one step that needs to be taken, right? Um, number two would be throw as much into whatever your retirement savings vehicle is now, fill it up, right? Fill it up because the more money in there, you think about compounding of your interests and things of that nature, fill it up. Um, be definitely, <laughs> without trying to give actual financial advice, because I won't do that unless I'm actually in front of someone, right? Because everybody's situation is different. So I can't right. say, put, you should put your money here, you should put your money, you know, I can't necessarily say that without looking at an individual's, you know, financial portfolio. But I, I will say that now is the time, if not not almost too late, to start thinking about that, right? Um, what I had wished I had done back in my 20s was had taken this more seriously, right? Because I did not, right? Um, I didn't know to, really. I, You know, when you're young, you just, you think you're invincible and, you know, oh, I'll be here forever. I have, I'll have money. I'm in school. My, <laughs> my degree is going to make sure I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, that's, that's not always the case, right? Because as you can see, a lot of people get degrees, they rack up a lot of student loans from these colleges, and uh, a lot of people come out of school and can't even find a job in their gotcha. field that they went to school school in, right? Um, so we have we had to really start thinking outside the box, right? And I will say when millennials came along, I'd say that generation kind of broke the mold a little bit, right? Because they started questioning well, why are we doing things this way? This doesn't make sense to me, right? So I, I've noticed a lot of them have the more, they've more branched out to a more entrepreneurial type path as opposed to working for an employer, yes. right? I have noticed that between the two generations. So yeah, I, and I'd say millennials, they definitely, you know, they got a head start now. I'd say it's time to focus. Focus on retirement, focus on putting money aside, and not touching it so that when they do get to retirement, they'll be, you know, hopefully sitting pretty, pretty, right? And not outliving their money. Again, I think the number one thing is a financial professional, 100%. Mm. So without getting into details and giving us all those trade secrets, <laughs> if, if somebody decides to, they want, like I said, they want to start saving for that, you don't want to just put it in savings and make 0.5 percent correct i don't know if that's right i'm just saying that because that's about it no you absolutely you said that absolutely right no you don't and, and, then, and then the bank or the institution will use your money to lend people and make mm -hmm. seven to eleven percent back on it and yeah. you get you get kibbles and bits yes. so what should they when they run across somebody like you let's mm -hmm. say i want to come see you you will set them up on is it a portfolio well, for, or something you what, set them up with? What I would first, the first thing I would do with them is do a full financial analysis, right? I want to know what you come, what you got coming in, what you got going out. I okay. want to see that you have a budget. If not, I'll help you with a budget, right? Once we do that, let's see what you got left over at the end of the month to actually put towards your retirement. You know, I, I can, like I said, I look at the whole picture. What's, what are your debts? Let's, you know, if you got high debts, let's, Let's put a strategy together for you to get those paid down. But I don't, I, you know, I strive towards the, I, you can pay your debts and save for your future at the same time. Yeah. Right. A lot of people say, oh, my debts are just too high. I can't start putting back money. No, that's, that's not the way to look at it. Right. Your, your debts are going to be your debts. Right. right. But your future, you need to secure that. 
right? So I, I think you can do them all in one basket, right? Yeah. Um, after that, I look at, I, I then I kind of determine what is my client's risk tolerance. Now, a lot of people I've talked to, especially recently, they their risk tolerance is pretty low, right? They're, they're, they're not really looking to be directly tied to the stock markets because of the volatility. It's up and down, up and down. And a lot of people don't necessarily have the time to kind of make up money from a down market. Um, so there's one strategy, it's called LERP, Life Insurance, um, Life Insurance Retirement Plans, right? Where you can actually get a basically life insurance policy that has a cash accumulation component And these accounts really do produce around eight to twelve percent growth each year, right? Um, yeah. So depending on the risk tolerance, if if they have a low risk tolerance, that's kind of where I'm kind of recommending my clients go. In that sense, okay. because they're guaranteed no loss, no market loss. They're pretty much safe from that, right? Um, they have they also, like I said, they have a death benefit attached to it that theoretically protects their income, meaning if something was to happen to them, their loved one or their family will get the benefit of that death benefit, right? right. To replace that income that was lost. Um, but again, that is a very good account to grow for retirement and it will do very well. <laughs> so Generation Z, um, the things that you're going through because Really, actually, y'all have caught, excuse the expression, y'all have caught hell with everything going on. You had the pandemic, you had the stock market, you had the housing boom. Everything mm -hmm. happened around y'all generation. We had 9-11. Yeah. We so had, yeah. How, how is it for anybody to survive through that financially wise or, or learn how to save everything where everybody's scared to death to put the money into anything? No, that, that is a very good point and statement to make, right? Um, again, protected strategy accounts, right? Mm -hmm. It's I feel more comfortable putting my money in something that's protected. If the market is poorly, my money is not affected by that. Contractually, my money is not affected by that. You know, and, you know, a, a lot of, and this is a strategy that the wealthy have used for years. As a matter of fact, the banks, use these accounts this is where they are investing the money that we have sitting in their bank accounts they're putting it into these accounts protected yeah. strategy accounts right but what what we don't know we don't know right i never knew this until i got into the industry yeah but you, you know but i look at it in a way that what y'all went through um there's only way but up yeah. On what you went through. Um, I talked to somebody about 10 or 12 years ago when they said they don't get into the stock market till it came around October, November. And I asked him why. He said, because um, that's when things grow. You got to look at what stock you're going to buy. He said he gets into the food part of it, like pork bellies and all that stuff. Okay. Everybody mm -hmm. knows that time of year people are going to buy it. Yep, because that's and around the holiday season. It's around the holiday yep. season. He was telling me that. He said he did all that. Then he turned around right around January. He went on and took what he can out and, and put that money to the side, but still kept it in there. But he invested a lot during the holiday season and mm -hmm. put it back at the end of the holiday season. I said, why do you do that? I said, Ron, I've been doing this for over 10 years like this. And wow. I, I've been doing pretty good making making money. I doubled sometimes on some of the things that I did. I doubled. Yeah. I was amazed. And he said, I love it when a stock splits. He said, when, okay. when, when it splits, that means I'm getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he was telling me that he, he, he was not a financial um, person. He he just learned how to do but it. But he learned so, enough. Mm -hmm. He learned how to do it. And I, I, it never dawned on me to do things like that during certain parts of, of the year. Yeah. No, and that's exactly. And and the one thing I that came to mind about that is that 
the information to research and do your own due diligence is out there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just like he did. Right. Um, again, it's it's in your hands. Your future and how much money you have saved for the future is in your hands. Yeah. It's it's up to us. You have to take accountability for that. OK. And what and what is your next step? Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. What is your next step? I don't know. <laughs> right, right. But but that, that was that was good. So um let's talk about that other lost generation. Which one uh, is that? Well, I'm not a lost generation. No, 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 Are we talking about you talking about the generation? What's that? Generation Z? No, not your generation. No, I'm I'm X. Yeah, so the yeah, yeah. you're talking about the millennials that, right after me. Oh, I ran across some of some of them and I listened to the <laughs> talk and that they do not want a house with a yard because they didn't want to do any work. That those are the ones that would buy condominiums and 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 they're fine and, and condominiums. I, mm -hmm. I'm serious, they are. Uh, they don't have to worry about no maintenance or anything. Right. The less There's a generation do, of less maintenance. Yeah, and, and, and that's good for them. They can care less. They don't want no yard. They don't want anything. So I was talking to one about three weeks ago, and he said, Ron, I got a, a I got two condos and and this. I got this going on. But you know what? I went over to somebody's house the other day and I enjoyed the yard sitting down there outside and everything. The place I have. I have an itty bitty little patio that could hold maybe six people and I couldn't throw anything. And he was just saying, I don't know what to do. I said, what you mean you don't know what to do? He said, I want a house so that we'll get a house. My yeah. answer, go ahead and get it. Well, how do I go about You got two condos at an edification place, right? Sell one of the condos and buy yourself a house. Yeah. You know, I said, yeah. it, you know what he said? You made it sound so easy about fighting with it. I said, well, I'm going to give you a word of wisdom from me. This is from me. Never overthink anything. Yeah, and very true. You, and you overthinking. And when you start overthinking, you never make up your mind. That's true. You just go out and meet myself. My wife will tell you, I go out, I'll do it. And then come on back and I'm done. This, yeah. Then three weeks later, oh, you should have waited three weeks. They got a sell on this right here. I said, well, how would I know three weeks later I have a sell on it? No, exactly. But that's true. But if you keep your receipt, if a sale <laughs> goes on, you go back and tell them within a month. You show the receipt, and they'll give you the difference back. They will, but but not on a house, not on a sale of a house. They won't. <laughs> no, not selling the house. No, no, I'm talking about goods. But yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but 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 with a house, you know, um, that's going up no matter what. Yeah, you know, that's the investment. You're going to incur. Money into into that house, but yep. it's it's maintenance. Definitely I mean, is that you, you get a new house, you gotta have, it's gonna have some maintenance. It's not gonna stay yes. new forever. Speaking of which, when you talk about the maintenance on the home, another recommendation is before you go out and buy a home, you need to make sure you have enough cash in your savings account to take care of things that break. Mm -hmm. Right. Case in point, when we just bought our home, literally. Two days after living in here, the whole house flooded. The sewer backed up and everything. We had literally just replaced brand new floors. Wow. Three days after we moved in. Sweet. Right? You got to prepare for things like that. So, I, you know. You know, I would like to get a hold of some young owners before they buy a house. And my background is I'm home improvement. I did a lot. I would love to get a little, little business together and go out with them and tell them what they need to buy before they move into the house just to care to take care of general stuff. Yeah, you know, that's a good idea. This general stuff you need. I will advise you to get these set of tools right here, and this is what you need to do if something happens before you call somebody out, because half this stuff you can fix yourself. That is true. And, and, that is true. And, 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 um, I've been talking about this for 10 years doing something like that. So I, I may even want to put that into, um, I don't know. Put that into action. I think I that's a good. What, I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> <laughs> good point. I <laughs> know. It's a very good idea. Yeah. You got to market that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll just call it a good idea. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>
But but I hate seeing the young people taking advantage of when they yeah. do go out and get a house and like I said, something happens and sometimes the vultures are out there preying on you. Um oh, yeah. Ramsey said always have a uh emergency fund. Yep. Always have one, three to six right. months emergency fund. Yeah. And these kids will go out and get an emergency fund and a vulture will destroy that emergency fund with one visit. Yep. Because Easily. they're they're naive, don't know what's going on, and, and you know, they get taken. Yeah. And, and then that's what leaves a bitter taste in your mouth. You got a new house, look at this. I got to do all the. You should be able to move to a new house, have nothing to do for at least five years, I would say. Nothing major. Yeah. Because well, everything is there five years, from the AC to the hot water heater to dishwasher and all that stuff. Major appliances. Yeah. You ought to be, but sometimes it happens. Just That's like true. You, said, you bought your house and it flooded. It happened. Yeah, it happens. Totally yeah. happens. But, yeah, and, and and it's just just being prepared for that, right? And, and like you said, that figure out a way to not get taken by the vultures. Yeah, right? they're out there, and I would love to um, um, have a class of young people coming in buying a house for the first time, and I can sit down there and talk to them the do's and don'ts. That's a good idea. You know what? You probably could start with maybe you know a local real estate agent. Right. Because a lot of yeah. a lot of the real estate agencies, you know, they run like classes on preparing for home ownership and things like that. that yeah. So that, that'd that be something to, you know, maybe I may, may do that. You see, you know, yeah. rung a bell, do it once a month on a Saturday <laughs> somewhere. And exactly. You know, and have them all come in, have something printed out for mm -hmm. them, get to them and all that stuff. Okay. That's a good idea. Right. Look at you. Here we talking about finance. You don't start. I don't start another business. <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, that's how we do it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, but you know, um, the part what you're doing uh, for money and how to do that's the scary part right there. Mm -hmm. if something happens. What are you going to do? So the first thing go through your head is panic. Yeah, and, and then you get the first person that come along with to come over there and poke your eyes out. Why is the reason why you go to the grocery store? They have all those stacks of things right there at checkout. They put it right there because that's that's yeah, impulse, that's impulse buying. Impulse that's buying that I buy. always fall for. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so oh. the same thing when something happened in your house, you're gonna start looking through the internet, seeing who's the best person and all that stuff and everything. See, I recommended three or four AC companies to people already that I dealt with personally when uh when I was su supervisor for a um 32 laundromats. So I okay. so I knew who to use and who not to use. And okay, I'm, I'm going to need you to send me a list of the names because we're looking okay. for someone to come and clean our ducks and all of that. So, yeah, so I, I, got you, I got you. I got you on that one. I got three people I could could uh, turn you on to. So, so being out there and seeing what's going on, I know that people are not going to poke their eyes out. So right. normally, if I give the information to somebody, I call them and say, look, somebody get ready, get ready to call you. Do them right. Yeah. I said, do them right. Yeah, exactly. So, but I'm recommending you for a reason. So if you want, yeah. me, you want me to continue to recommend you, do them right. Right? Yeah, agreed. I, I got the power of radio. I get on talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> so financially wise, when these youngsters um, get a house, that's some of the things you do. Not only youngsters, because they even got, they're taking advantage of the baby boomers too. Oh, yeah. Oh they're yeah. Really, oh, they're really taking advantage advantage of them. Um, they come out and charge them an outrageous price for something, and and and, and they'll go ahead and do it because they use that scare tactic. Yeah. And, and and baby boomers will fall for that scare tactic more than the other generation. The younger, yeah, that's other, true. I'm not paying for that. <laughs> but, right. Exactly. <laughs> what you talking about? I'm not paying for that. Would be yeah, because I when you when I get work done here, I need. To Three or four estimates first. Yes. I don't care how bad it is. Mm -hmm. We're going to check around. Yeah. yeah. And that's the main thing to do. So, uh, boy, financial wise, that could wipe out your, um, your three. Your whole emergency fund. Yeah. yeah. They could wipe it out one single little swoop. That's true. So, that's nothing. You got to be critical. You got your emergency fund there. That's exactly what it's there for. But yeah. when it comes down to something major like that, you need to take care of it. That's and true. So very true. Got very anything true. else for us? Because before we wrap things up, no, I don't think so, Ron. I think um, I look forward to our our discussions about finances. Definitely, yeah. And 
Yeah. Right. And I'll definitely I'll I'll definitely post my contact information for anyone that wants to reach out for some type of financial consultation. Um okay. I'm offering free financial consultation. So Look I'll definitely that. post my link and my calendar link so that your listeners can hop on my calendar. Go ahead and do that because I will yes. start, you know, start start um talking. Not all ages, not just Yes, I, I, I'm ages. helping them all. Yes. But but I love the youngsters who's just getting married and, and getting ready to buy a new house. And yes. um, that's where you need to have your structure. And as they say in the Bible, make sure you build your foundation on solid rock. Absolutely. So that's Absolutely. Do before that is key. Before. Yeah. So. Yep. But, Thank you. That's very good. Yeah. All right. So you get on going and um, um, you stay out of trouble. Uh, I try. But we got Martha and you the following week. Yes, My next Monday. Martha. Wow, those two uh, yeah. will be in the studio. So I don't know if you're going to bring armed guards or what because they're going to be jumping on me. <laughs> yeah, you might need a little protection that yeah. night. Yeah, <laughs> but, but uh, uh, y'all really need to tune in for that show next Monday. It's, it's, it's going to be really good. Be, it, it's going to be real good. And if it goes past an hour, I'm good with that because um, when the information starts flowing in and things start going, and sometimes you don't realize you ran through the top already. Yeah, that is true. Sit down there and so and let everybody know it, it will be a um, live phone interview. Yes. Uh, if you want to call in for a question, everything is going to be live at 210-461-8034. All right. I'll let everybody know. All right, my young lady, you take care. And um, um, I would say get some rest because you're going to need it next week because uh, I'm going to put y'all through the ringer. Oh, man. Yeah, I'll make sure I get some rest and have my coffee beforehand. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. All right, you take care of yourself, and we'll catch you next week. You too. Bye, everybody. Bye. We welcome everybody who listened to our, our guest. Um, today, and we appreciate you chiming in and let us know what's going on. If you have anything you want to talk about, please hit us up at 210-461-8034 or hit us up on our website, wsanradio.com, and we will be glad to have you come on board and be one of our guests. Thank you.